Kazakhstan is a country located in the heart of Eurasia, appeared on the geopolitical map only in 1991. It is bounded on the northwest and north by Russia, on the east by China, and on the south by Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, the Aral Sea and Turkmenistan. The Caspian Sea bounds Kazakhstan to the southwest. Kazakhstan is the largest country in Central Asia and the ninth largest in the world. For centuries, the great Kazakh steppe accepted caravans of the Silk Road in oases of its cities and settlements. It was historically closely tied to the Silk Road trade routes, acting as a crossroads for the movement of people, goods and ideas between Europe and Asia. The capital of Kazakhstan and its the largest business center is Nur Sultan. The third megapolis of the country, Shinkent, is as a city in the south of Kazakhstan with an 800 years history founded in the 12th century. Nowadays, Shimkent is a city of national significance, one of the largest industrial, commercial and cultural centers of the country, the third largest by population of more than one million people. One of the large multidisciplinary education institutions of Kazakhstan with a deep history is located here. It is Awazov University. That is, here students and undergraduates acquire practical working skills. In other words, this is a mini copy of a large production and diary plant. Within the framework of the program of scholarship academic mobility and double degree education, the university cooperates with more than 170 foreign universities. 150 students a year study for the academic mobility at leading universities in the world. The digitalization process has affected all spheres of society, including education. At Awesaf University, innovations are intensively introduced into the education system and 3D, VR, STEM technologies are widely used. The IT Center provides consulting to teachers of schools in Shimkian on robotics, provides material resources to students in the laboratory of robotics and mechatronics at the laboratory of mathematical and 3D modeling and provides material resources of the IT Center to students and teachers of the Awazov University. In Student Design Bureau, students and teachers prepare scientific projects for participation in regional, national and international competitions. Students of clubs and Student Design Bureau develop robotic systems for participation in competitions and competitions in robotics. The material and technical base of the university consists of 10 educational buildings of a modern standard, 6 student dormitories and 2 sports complexes. For the comprehensive development of students, more than 30 public, political and cultural organizations function. A of University that has united history and modernity today prepares more than 27,000 students and invites to take your best.
Hello to everyone. Uh, hello, Dr. Dr. Van Yupan. I am uh, from the uh, South Kazakhstan University. Uh, in uh, we meet uh, today uh, Dr. Yupan from uh, the director of the of of the Chinese Academy of Sciences. Uh, so welcome, uh, Dr. Yupai. Uh, it's, great, it's great to have you with us at the Nobel Fest. And, uh, uh, and uh, I know that you are going to talk to tell us about the future of the high energy physics. So, uh, uh, and now I uh, give you the floor, please, Dr. Yupai. Thank you. Uh, let me share my screen. So can you hear me well and also see the screen? Yeah. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about the future of uh, high engine physics. Uh, we all know that in the past uh, several hundred of years, people have been trying to uh, study the structure of matter. Uh, it is actually uh, the particle physics, a continuation of the quest to the infinite small. I mean, a few hundred, several hundred years ago, we were studying the molecules. These end up chemistry. And afterwards, we managed to go deeper to the atoms. And these end up atomic physics, condensed matter physics, et cetera. And uh, further down, we go to the nuclear nuclei, which end up the nuclear physics. And now we are at the level of quarks and leptons. And this is the particle physics. So indeed, this is the history of the science in the past hundred, several hundred years. And the quest to the deeper structure of matter was always a driving force. Uh, on, the, in the, on the other hand, we have infinite large, uh, which is uh, the, the, the universe. And uh, the study of the universe uh, usually is called cosmology. This is also a continuation from a planet going all the way bigger to the uh, solar systems, stars, uh, galaxies, clusters. And indeed, our universe is originated from a big bang. And the following process is governed by the physics laws, which is similar to the particle physics. So that's why uh, we do need to understand the particle physics in order to understand the universe. So these two uh, 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 infinite end up to uh, connect it together. So infinite small and infinite large, in the end, they are, uh, they are having the same uh, 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 physics laws. So particle physics uh, based on the uh, accelerators to break down the structure, which depends very much on the high energy. And the cosmology is actually uh, studied the early universe. Uh, uh, and this is actually at a very high temperature. So they have exactly the same uh, uh, physics laws. So after some 70 years of study, our particle physics had a so-called standard model, which says that all the matter are made of quarks and leptons. In this uh, picture, you see uh, six uh, leptons and six uh, uh, quarks. And all these uh, uh, 12 particles are glued together by the fields we call intermediate uh, fields uh, in which we have photons which transmit electromagnetic interactions. And then we have W and Z particles which transmit the, uh, the weak interactions. And these two interactions are combined to be a wide theory called the electroweak theory. And then uh, we have gluons 
which transmit the strong interactions. And uh, the theory is called the QCD, quantum corona dynamics. And uh, we don't yet, uh, we have not yet managed to combine electroweak and the QCD into one ground unification theory. But one day or another, we probably, uh, we are going to be able to do that. And all of these uh, particles obtain their mass through a, a field called the Higgs field. And the excite exciting state of the, of the Higgs field is a particle called the Higgs. So these particles now forms the, uh, the whole uh, 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 standard model of particle physics. And we have a good understanding of our uh, 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 ultimate structure of matter uh, as we see now. Now, this last piece of the particles in the standard model called the Higgs particles is actually discovered in the year of 2012. This was actually a very important historic event in science. And uh, by the discovery of this particle, um, the standard model now becomes complete. We have all the particles in this model being discovered. And this is actually an effort about by tens of thousands of scientists and engineers over 30 years in the world. And uh, was really a, a great discoveries. And uh, in the process, you see from this uh, picture, um, we have the large accelerators and a very large detectors. And in the process, we also managed to invent a very important tools which we use nowadays almost every day, every hour. It's called the World Wide Web. And that was because scientists wanted to communicate the information, the data, and also their, their, their results. So uh, scientists in, at CERN, at the uh, European uh, Center for Particle Physics, developed this, this uh, World Wide Web, which are uh, now being used by almost everybody. So it shows that uh, studies of uh, uh, basic science sometimes may end up uh, unexpected discoveries, which in the end, will improve and help uh, us a lot in our daily life. So it shows that basic science, although uh, may viewed by many to be useless, but in the end, it is actually very, very useful. Now, with the discovery of the Higgs, as, as I said, all the elementary particles in the standard model has been observed. And it looks like we are end of the story. But indeed, this is not true. Uh, we still have a lot of issues not yet answered. For example, uh, we see that the quarks and leptons are very symmetric. You see six quarks and six leptons. They are symmetric in this two by three kind of metrics. But what governs this kind of symmetry? This is uh, an answer, and we don't know yet. Uh, on the other hand, we also know that the uh, uh, mass of these elementary particles starting from neutrinos all the way up to the top quark has a huge difference of the mass. And this is uh, sometimes uh, seems not so uh, natural because we believe that things which are at the same uh, say level should have more or less the same mass, like uh, uh, what we see periodic tables from the lightest to heaviest uh, elements, they may differ by several hundred, a factor of several hundred, but not by say tens of 13 uh, uh, kind of uh, factors, which is uh, uh, too huge. And this is actually the case for the neutrinos all the way up to the top quark. We also have another problem with the Higgs mass, which seems not very natural, uh, very strange and too small. And also our standard model give us the vacuum, which is not stable. This was shown in this picture. You can see that the measured uh, Higgs mass and the top mass, which obtained from the, from the experiment and, uh, and combined with uh, the uh, uh, 
uh, standard model theory calculation shows that we are just accidentally sitting at a vacuum which is not stable called the meta stable and this is a very uh, strange because we don't we cannot imagine that we are in an unstable vacuum and also in our standard model we don't have a place for dark matter particles and we have also issues of neutrinos and uh, and other issues and other uh, problems so it shows that the uh, we are actually at the turning point on the one hand our standard model particle physics seems complete now almost all the particles being discovered but on the other hand we still have a lot of unanswered questions and these are very difficult questions and they're very uh it's not easy to find the solution so we do need uh, experimental uh evidence to tell us uh how to proceed and where to find the new physics but in fact we are actually at a very difficult choice of the possible experimental approaches so we we have to choose from say uh, colliders between electrons positrons between uh, protons or between electron to protons or between the muons so we have many different possible ways towards the future and we have to find the uh, so uh, uh, we have to define a roadmap how to proceed, and this is actually the problem we are actually facing now. Uh, if we look at all the experiments right now in the world, uh, they are shown at, at, at this picture. At the, at the middle, we have the standard model, and we have three directions towards the future. One is the very high energy, one is a very high precision, and uh, the third one is go to the universe the standard model of cosmology and the tools to go to different uh, uh, directions are shown in this uh, in this picture you see uh, we we are able to use antimatter to study cosmology we can use neutrinos to study cosmology and also the dark matter is related to cosmology for the very high precision we have to go to say very decays and the precision test of the standard model and for the very high energy we need to understand what is the possible new physics beyond the standard model there are several different theories like compositeness model extra dimension model and the supersymmetry model and all these different models tell us what are the possible future uh, physics series which can build up a new level of the uh, uh, structure of matter. So there are different uh, experiments trying to study these uh, topics. Uh, for antimatter, we have uh, uh, AMS detector in space. And for neutrinos, we have many, many experiments like uh, Diabe Juno in China and the T2K, Nova, Super K, and so on. And all these experiments are now uh in and the and the operation mostly and the operation and they try to study the properties of neutrinos and to understand the the deeper physics uh, uh, uh laws behind all the uh, uh, experimental evidence uh for search of a dark matter we have um, a number of experiments like lux xeno lz and so on and there are also experiments in space like a fermi dump ams etc uh in space looking for dark matter for actions we have experiment called admx looking for these uh, very tiny particles which can be a possible candidate of the uh, of the dark matter uh for the rarity case we have beijing electron positron collider best three hcb at cern uh bell two in japan and so on and for precision test, we have Comet G minus two experiment. You probably heard of this uh, a few years ago that they had uh, major observations that it could be some deviations from the standard model. And for very high energies, we have HC uh, experiments uh, called the Atlas CMS. And also people are talking about the future colliders like International Linear Collider, the Future Circular Collider, 
and the circular electron positive charge colliders in China. So there are a lot of international efforts trying to figure out what are the possible roadmap towards the future. So in Europe, there was a 2020 update of the European strategy for particle physics. And uh, in the US, there was a SNOMAS process 2021, but because of the pandemic, they delayed to, uh, to this year, 2022. And in Japan, they are also having a number of uh, 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 strategy studying process. And, uh, and also there are a number of workshops on future strategy of, strategy of particle physics in China. So uh, on the table for the discussion, uh, there are a number of uh, possible colliders towards the future. The first one is the International Linear Collider called IRC. And this is a 30 kilometers linear accelerator and they then collide at the center and you see this the red spot, this is the uh, detector and the electrons and the positrons will be accelerated along this uh, linac and then uh, up to the end, very end, they collide. So this is the machine which was proposed almost 20 years ago and is still in the discussion. And Japan is trying to host this machine in the, in the next, let's say, five or 10 years to start the construction. Another machine is called Compact Linear E plus minus Collider, uh, uh, CLIC. And this is at CERN. And uh, if you look at the arrangement, it's quite similar to the, to the uh, linear collider, International Linear Collider, the IRC, but the accelerating technologies are slightly different. And, uh, and the costs are slightly different, but the concept to some extent are similar. These are linear colliders. And for circular colliders, uh, we have a proposal in China to build 100 kilometers circular electron positive charge colliders. And this can uh, um, be at the uh, Higgs, uh, uh, at the energy of Higgs mass. So sometimes it's also called the Higgs factory. And in this tunnel, since uh, it is 100 kilometers uh, tunnel, uh, uh, after the electron positron collider phase, the tunnel can be reused for the proton proton collider. So this is actually a two phase machine which can be actually reused uh, uh, several times. And so for this reason, people like it because it has a more uh, longer lifetime. And the idea was proposed in the year 2012 um, at the Fermilab workshop. A similar program is now also worked out at CERN, European Center for Particle Physics. And they have a similar two-phase uh, program, first one called FCCEE, for electron phase, and the second phase for uh, uh, hadrons uh, or protons, so FCCHH. So you can see this is the location of the Geneva Lake, and then uh, you have the circular collider placed uh, in, in this way, which is uh, uh, just next to the large hadron collider of, uh, at the CERN. Uh, sorry, this is a uh, miss. And, uh, and also there was a, a muon collider uh, discussed at CERN and also at the, um, at, the, uh, uh, at the US. So this machine can be used also for the uh, neutrino physics, for colliders and so on. But this is a, a little bit too premature for the construction and it will still need more than 10 years to study its uh, feasibility. So uh, if you put all the colliders in this table, uh, you can see the comparison of their performance and also their cost and their proposed time schedule. So for the linear collider, we have an international linear collider, which has a, a 250 GV center mass. The luminosity is one times 10 to 34, and the clique is very similar. And you can also see that the cost is very similar 
They all cost something like seven billion dollars, and the schedule is uh, somehow also quite similar. 2025, 2030, um, uh, uh, we can consider them to be a very similar, say, time schedule. Uh, another uh, category is the circular collider, which has a very similar, also the performance of the uh, energy and also the luminosity. So FCCE is 90 to 350 GeV, eight times 10 to 34, the luminosity cost $10 billion and, uh, and uh, the time schedule is 2030, and CPC in China slightly less the uh, the energy and also slightly less the, the luminosity, but for the for the for the lower cost, the five billion dollars. Uh, for the proton proton collider, this is actually at a much later stage. Uh, so at CERN, they have a hot uh, uh, FCC HH hundred TV and the one times 10 to 35 the luminosity, but the cost is much higher, $20 billion, uh, 2050. So it's almost uh, 30 years from now. And uh, similarly, uh, SPPC is also at 2045. So these are all the so-called second phase of the circular, circular collider after the electron positron collision. And uh, of course, if you are able to build the electron colliders, the proton colliders, you can imagine you can collide the electron and the protons. And you can also driven to have, uh, uh, you can dream to have elect uh, muon colliders in the, in the far future. Uh, there are people talking about the far, far future, uh, a new technology called the weak field acceleration. But still, we have issues of beam quality, power efficiency, and so on. And uh, this uh, is probably uh, can only be thought of in uh, in the, in the far future. So you see, you have so many different choices. But then, uh, which one we should choose from? So in Europe, they decide to go to uh, FCC uh, EE. And uh, of course, linear collider is another possible option. But the, uh, the key is to have electron positron collider running at the energy of the Higgs, which means 250 GeV. And this is the so-called the highest priority for the next collider. And for the longer term, they could think, of, think about a proton-proton collider. So FCCEE and FCCHH is a kind of, uh, say, approach uh, uh, which CERN think a uh, uh, um, uh, most probable uh, solution. Uh, but of course, they have to work also on the on the uh, 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 innovative uh, technologies like uh, 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 weak field acceleration. So CERN now put. Uh, some funding for the R&D, like FCC, 20 million in the Swiss franc per year, CLIC, 5 million in the Swiss franc year, and the muon collider, and also for the magnets and so on. So you see, it's a huge investment towards the future technologies. For other countries, uh, the US is still in the process of a snow mass, uh, which were uh, defined their choices. So my personal guess or what I heard of are a possible beyond colliders or a possible linear collider. Uh, in Japan, they are still talking about the international linear collider for almost 20 years. And, uh, and they try to get the support from the government. And in China, we have circular electron positron collider as I just mentioned before. So, uh, we need to figure out a global strategy towards the future. So my personal feeling is that we are going to get a Higgs factory. This is the highest priority because we need to measure the Higgs couplings up to the 1% uh, for reasons which I'm going to talk about later on. And uh, the FCCE at CERN and the CPC 
in China should proceed in parallel until one is approved by their government. This is because competition can enhance the chance for both. And also Higgs factory is a very important, so important to miss. So we, uh, we, uh, we, we need to, uh, to, be, to guarantee that until it is, uh, say, finally uh, supported by the, 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 any of the funding agencies. So uh, indeed, this is uh, what we happening right now. So both FCC, EE, and the CPC uh, proceed on the design and R&D, and we try to get our own respective government to support for the uh, for the construction in the next, hopefully within the next ten years. In the meantime, I think the whole community will try to get one of the linear collider to to proceed because the linear technology is very important. And this is actually the only technology we can imagine to go up to the 10 TeV for a lepton collider. And this is actually absolutely needed if new physics is discovered at the circular collider. So from point of view technology, we should have at least one circular, uh, one linear collider uh, to be our choice in the, in the far future. So we will continue to lobby the Japanese government for the International Linear Collider, but in the meantime, to uh, support the R&D of the clique at CERN. Uh, indeed, if you think the other way around, why not if we have only the Linear Collider and forget about the circular colliders like FCC and CPC? The reason is the following. Uh, IRC and the clique is not enough, only it's not enough. Uh, we need multiple detectors uh, to cross check with each other, but the linear collider can only uh, uh, support one detector for one machine. And, uh, and this is actually not a, a very good situation. There was a technology called the push-pull, which means that in the, in the half a year, you put one detector and another half a year, put another detector. And this kind of push-pull option is actually very time consuming and not very efficient. So personally, I suggest to give up completely push-pull options. And we support for one of the linear colliders between ISC and C click. And we try to get one of the circular colliders to be constructed in the next 10 years. So this is uh, what I think the best approach for the particle physics in the, in, the, in the near future. But in the meantime, we should work on the R&D of the proton colliders. And we should aim for iron-based sub high temperature superconducting magnets in the next 10 to 15 years for one of the proton colliders, FCC, HH, or SPPC. And the low energy FCC HH option lacks the technology impact. So we believe that it should be abundant. Indeed, this has been abundant. And uh, we should maintain also the R&D effort for muon colliders and also for the weak field acceleration. So now let me give you uh, some uh, uh, introduction of the China's effort on the uh, CPC. So uh, before I go to CPC, let me give you a short introduction about accelerators in China since 50s. So uh, the first accelerator in China was 2.0 MeV proton electrostatic accelerator. And afterwards there was a 30 MeV electron LINAC in 60s. And 80s, there was a 30 MeV proton LINAC. So in addition, uh, to these small trials, a number of large high energy accelerators were proposed unsuccessfully in 60s to 80s until we had a real start of the particle uh, physics accelerator, uh, BPC. Uh, so BPC is actually acronym of the Beijing Electron Positron John Collider. And uh, on this collider, we have a detector called the Beijing Spectrometer. And this machine is also dual purpose machine, which can also be used for the synchrotron radiation uh, 
applications. So it's called the Beijing Synchrotron Radiation Facility. So this is a landscape arrangement of the facilities uh, uh, for this machine. Uh, this is a 2.5 GV electron positron collider. And the construction time was 1984 to 1988. So we saw the first collision uh, of, the, of the event uh, uh, in 1988. In, uh, in uh, 2004 to 2008, there was upgrade. Uh, so now the machine is called the BPC2 and the detector is called the B BS3. Uh, you can see this is the evolution of this uh, machine at this energy range. So from 60s in the US, in uh, Europe, there were several uh, E plus minus colliders running at uh, about 3 GeV, and so Doris, uh, Nona, and Spear. And uh, after that, we have BPC, which came in in 1984 to 1988 and operated until uh, 2003. And there was, it was leading the uh, luminosity of the machine of this type. And after that, there was uh, a short period that uh, other machines were lead in, uh, in the world. And then we have this BPC2 upgrade which again becomes a leader of the, of the field. So you see this the picture of the double ring machine in the, in the tunnel. So BS3 is an international collaboration. So we have more than 500 members from 74 institutions in 15 countries, including many from the Europe, from the US, and also uh, a lot from China. So uh, BPC2 and the BS3 had a very successful history. Uh, we had a number of major discoveries like Four Park State ZC3900 and also new decay modes of XYZ particles, discovery of exotic light hydrons like 1835, uh, search for glue balls and so on. So currently, uh, more than 40 papers published per year and a total of 360 papers published so far. So for the future, uh, we had a discussion since 2005, what could be the future of high energy physics in China after BPC2? Uh, whether we need a new machine in China or not, how about we join the International Linear Collider? Uh, but we still don't know what is the future of a linear collider since 2005, already 17 years passed, but we still don't know whether IC is going to be built or not. And also we don't know how to get support in China for the IC. Uh, fortunately, in the year of 2012, uh, we figured out that we have a possibility to build a Higgs factory uh, after the the, the, the BPC2, and this can be the future of high energy physics in China. Uh, this idea, Higgs factory, uh, is called the CPC, is, uh, is actually a great idea because it can be followed afterwards by a possible super proton proton collider. So the idea, once was proposed, quickly gained the momentum in China and also in the world. Uh, so uh, after that, uh, uh, after we report this in, uh, in, uh, in, in the Fermilab in the 2012, quickly uh, CERN started to work on the future uh, circular colliders, FCC. So indeed, we were actually leading the idea towards the future of uh, particle physics in the world. So we managed to organize a number of uh, meetings, like the kickoff meeting of CPC in 2013, in September 2013. And uh, this was uh, in December 2013, international workshops and so on. So things got really started in the year of 2013 after uh, one year of the uh, proposal of the, of the ideas. So why? we are interested to the Higgs uh, because Higgs is a window to the new physics. Although it has been discovered in the year of 2012, but still there are a lot of unknowns because Higgs is a very special 
special particles. It is the only elementary particles with spin zero, and the only elementary particles with non-gauge interactions, such as the self-couplings and also Yukawa couplings. And the Higgs directly related to physics beyond the standard model, and also directly related to the cosmology. For example, we still don't know where the mass of the Higgs came from. Uh, we know that Higgs gave the mass to all the elementary particles, but we don't know where its own any its own mass comes from. So this is a, a very strange situation. And also the vacuum is not stable in the standard model. And uh, we still uh, don't know how to couple the standard model to the dark matter sector. And Higgs seems to give mass to all the elementary particles. And it may have also coupling to dark matter because dark matter is, the mass is the only property we know of for the dark matter particles. So they all have mass and this is something they in common. And Higgs potential shape also defi defines electric weak phase transition in the early universe. And this also helps us to understand the evolution of the, of the universe. So we need to have a detailed and precise measurement of Higgs to understand many of these issues. So the best approach is to have a precise measurement of the Higgs couplings. We all know that at the Large Hadron Collider, we haven't seen any new physics. Uh, at the direct searches, the, uh, the, the mass scale of the new particles is uh, more than one TV because we haven't seen anything at HC. Uh, at HC, we measure couplings at the 10% precision. So the mass, the corresponding uh, uh, scale of the new physics is also at one TV. So they are consistent. We haven't seen anything new. So if you want to see anything new, you have to increase your sensitivity or your precision by a factor of 10. So we need to go to 1% precision. Uh, you can go all the way up to the 10, 10 uh, TV. And indeed, you can see from this picture, uh, the CPC or, uh, or FCCE can improve the coupling measurement by a factor of 10 and sometimes by a factor of uh, uh, 100. So this kind of improvement can actually tell us that uh, where the new physics is. And indeed, this is what we expected to see the new physics. And we believe that by uh, 10 TV, we should be able to see the new physics. So I'm not going to go through the detailed discussion about this. So uh, after several years of study, we are now writing four books about new physics at the CPC. So one is about the physics of, uh, physics of physics, Higgs, one is about the physics of Higgs, physics of electric weak, physics of QCD, and also the physics of flavors. So Higgs has been completed, uh, flavor is close to be completed, and the electro weak and the QCD is now in the, in the preparation. So we believe uh, within, uh, say, two years, we should be able to finish all the four books. And this is the layout of the machine. So you can see this is a double ring machine uh, with a circumference of 100 kilometers. There is also a booster at the same tunnel, 100 kilometers. There is also a LINAC, 1.2 kilometers. So these are baseline parameters like 100 kilometers, 30 megawatt per beam, upgradable to 50 megawatt, and, uh, and also to a higher luminosity Z factory, to the high energy at the TT bar, and also uh, to the PP collider. So this is uh, our design principles. And indeed, this machine is, uh, is a very high luminosity, because it has at least a factor of three higher the luminosity than the linear collider, and it has two detectors. So indeed, the number of Higgs obtained at the circular collider can be a factor of six higher than the linear collider. And in addition, uh, the machine can be upgraded to the PP collider, and also it is a multi-purpose uh, 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 machine because we can use 
it's a uh, uh, synchrotron radiation with the antigen up to 100 MeV. So this kind of uh, uh, monochromatic photons can be used for nuclear physics, astronuclear physics, material science, and also structure inspection, and so on. So this is what we are working on the uh, R&D, including the electron gun, the magnet, the positron source, uh, uh, superconducting the RF cavities, uh, clitrons, uh, magnets, uh, vacuum, and, uh, and so on. So these are pictures of some of the prototypes we have been uh, completed. Uh, you can see that uh, they are actually in the reasonably Good shape. And, uh, and for the detector, we came up with our own concept called the force concept. Indeed, in the last 20 years, people have been studying the International Linear Collider and the FCC and the CEPC. There were only uh, uh, four concepts for the detector. One is called a high magnetic field concept based on the drift chamber. And another one is the low magnetic field concept uh, uh, based on also the drift chamber. Another one, the full silicon concept. Uh, this is our own concept uh, from uh, uh, China. Uh, it is actually crystal character based. All the three other concepts did not have uh, uh, crystal character. They all used the silicon uh, tungsten uh, uh, electromagnetic character. So this is the design of the detector. You can see from the interaction point, we have silicon vertex chamber, silicon drift chamber, and, uh, and also, uh, sorry, silicon tracker, and, uh, and then a drift chamber for the particle identification. And uh, afterwards, we have a, a crystal carimeter for electromagnetic showers. And then we have a magnet, and afterwards, we have a silicon glass based hadron perimeter. So you see that from this uh, uh, design, they are in many ways different from existing concept. And some of this still need uh, tremendous R&D to, Im to improve and also to verify the technologies like scintillation glass and uh, crystal carimeter and so on. So we still have to, and also we still working on these kind of new technologies. Uh, in China, we're actually working on the site uh, investigation. So these red dots are the places we have been uh, studied, including uh, in the very north, near Beijing, and towards the very south. So uh, the site selection based on the geology, electric electricity supply, transportation, environment, local support, and so on. Uh, study of the CDR is based on Qinghuangdao, is this one, uh, which is uh, 300 kilometers from Beijing. Uh, more investigation is uh, still going on. So uh, final remarks. In 60s, particle physics was facing a turning point. A huge number of questions uh, are not answered, and no one knows if there are answers. So pessimists lost the confidence and left the field in 60s. But they missed the great discoveries of the standard model in later 60s. So the unbelievable successful stories of Quark models, Higgs mechanism, electric weak unification, quantum corona dynamics, and so on, were all invented or discovered in late 60s or uh, early 70s. So these uh, great discoveries uh, form the so-called standard model. And something like a 20 Nobel Prize was given to this uh, kind of uh, uh, theoretical invention and also experimental discoveries. So today we are actually facing a very similar turning point. We need a theory beyond the standard model because we know that standard model is just the effective theory at the low energy. It is not the final theory. Uh, we need something beyond that. But we need to figure out how to go forward in a reasonable 
appropriate experiment, experimental approach. So we need to uh, figure out how to, how to proceed. And indeed, I believe that we are going to figure out a way out in the not too far future. So we do need also young people like you sitting uh, listening to my talks to work on this field and, uh, and to make your major discoveries in the next 20, 30 years. So indeed, there are hints to the new physics. You probably heard in the last two weeks that there was a major discovery by experiment at Fermilab, the CDF experiment. And they observed that the W mass showing this uh, right bottom picture was away from the uh, standard model prediction by seven standard deviation. You see they are off from a theoretical prediction by a large number. And this deviation actually coming from this value, data R, and this data R coming from this kind of loop process. And in this loop process, for all the known particles from the standard model, it has been all calculated, and it is this line, this gray line. So you see there's a huge deviation, which means that there are new loops from the new particles, which we have to include it into this calculation in order to be in agreement with the experiment. So it shows that uh, if this measurement or this uh, a new result from CDF is right, is ought to have a new physics. And uh, this is actually a major kind of uh, discovery if it is true. Uh, in the near future, Atlas CMS at HC can reach similar position like CDF. So they are going to confirm the CDF's result. They see their precision is nine MeV. So five to 10 MeV can be reached in the next, say, five years. A CPC can actually reach better than one MEV precision. So this is uh, where it looks like. So indeed, uh, it shows that uh, particle physics is not yet at the end, and we have bright future. Uh, I hope you can join us. Thank you. Hello, can you hear me? Thank you very much for your lecture. So, uh, indeed, uh, the particle physics is a core directive and international field of physics. And many physicists and their scientists are involved in this project. So, uh, as far as I know, uh, nowadays uh, we have the longest provided in, uh, at Geneva. It is uh, the uh, center, uh, the European Center for uh, Nuclear Research. And uh, so now, uh, as I understand, you are planning to uh, build uh, an collider, that is circular electron particle collider. So, uh, uh, I'm interested, what is the advantage of this collider before the uh, collider at Geneva? Uh, the in Geneva, they have this large hydron collider in the operation right now, and they are going to complete the operation around the year of 2040. Uh, this is a hydron collider. And in the meantime, they plan to build this uh, FCC EE, uh, electron positron collider, at the same place, same location around the year of 2030. So they hope that uh, by the time of uh, the LHC stopped the operation, they have this electron positron collider beginning to operate. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Lee, so this is their plan. So uh, one more question. Yes. Uh, one more question. So, you know, uh, you said that the uh, Higgs boson is the turning point uh, at the development of the particle physics. So, uh, I'm interested why the uh, Higgs boson is called what particle? 
So can you repeat the question? The uh, quality of the sound was not, uh, uh, so not, was not very good. Uh, yes. Uh, bosons, uh, Higgs boson is called a, a god particle. Why it is so? Oh, why it is so special? Yeah. So Higgs is the only bos bosons, it's uh, elementary particles, quote unquote, with spin zero. And the uh, spin zero particles are very few. Uh, let me show you this. You see all the elementary particles, they either have spin half, spin one, and spin zero uh, is only the Higgs. Uh, it is special because uh, we, uh, we know that the pions and the uh, Cooper pairs are the composite particles with spin. And uh, the Higgs potential has exact the form of lambda Ginsburg potential in the condensed matter. And uh, we know now that lambda Ginsburg form of the potential is coming from the Cooper pair. So uh, it's a very natural to imagine that Higgs is not an uh, elementary particles, but a pair of something uh, coupled together to appear as uh, uh, elementary particles at this lower energy. And also Higgs uh, uh, had a number of non-gauge interaction like self-couplings and the recover couplings while uh, all the other uh, particles only undergoes the, uh, the, uh, the uh, gauge interactions. And uh, all the unknowns or, or, or special uh, problems of the uh, standard model are related to the mass, like the Higgs mass, like the vacuum of the stable, the metastable of the vacuum also uh, originated from the Higgs mass and also top mass. And the coupling with dark matter is related to the mass. So, I mean, they all, to one reason or another, uh, associated with Higgs. So this is actually a window, we call it a window to the new physics. And we have to understand it very, very well before we can go to the next step. Oh, Dr. Yang, you found the Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. And I wish you and your team.